Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm starting the video presentation series. Now, I previously had a false start with this series, and that previous video has been deleted. And the reason is because I didn't feel like my first stab at this series was a true tutorial. I made some bad decisions when I first made that video. And so, this second attempt at this video series is a more responsible one as somebody who's trying to educate the public. It's important to know how to make a presentation video and how to do it in such a way that it doesn't overcomplicate the process. Remember KISS. Keep it simple, smarty pants. That's not the actual term, but still, it's... you get the idea. It's also important to be able to make a presentation video, especially if you're interested in animation, because there is a lot of work that is available for people who know how to animate and for them to actually make presentation videos. So the process starts like most other animated projects. It all starts with the script, and here you see me writing it out right now. If you don't have any fancy writing software, feel free to download LibreOffice. It's a free open source suite of Office tools that's very easy to use. It works pretty much like any other set of Office tools out there, and you really can't beat the free price tag. While writing out the script, I decided to write out all of the dialogue and for all of the information relating to visual information, such as things that need to be animated, I wrote it out in red. Sometimes the content will just be me recording video screen capture material, while other times I'll genuinely have to be animating something. I found that writing out the script first really helps to visualize what sort of footage you need for the project, rather than having it all just be up in the air and working haphazardly. You might be tempted to think that you're not working for a client, you're working for yourself. Maybe this presentation is just for you. So you don't need a script, you don't need a storyboard, but you'd also probably be wrong. Animation can be difficult to visualize, and trying to visualize an entire project based on Nothing can be really difficult. Most of the time, it's difficult enough for somebody to animate what's currently on the screen. So setting out on a project like this without a roadmap really isn't the smartest thing to do. While writing this script out, I found myself backtracking towards previous paragraphs and restructuring things. Imagine not having a script and having to throw away hours and hours of animation because you have to restructure what you created because you didn't write a script. Restructuring a series of sentences and paragraphs is far easier than having wasted hours and hours of animating something incorrectly and having to restructure it over and over again. With a presentation video, you don't necessarily need to follow traditional script layouts. Just write something down as a roadmap that you'll be able to understand. It's not like you're animating a big epic story like Full Metal Alchemist, Attack on Titan, or anything like that. Just put down what you need to know in order for you to not only communicate to the viewer, but also to communicate to yourself what all of your assets need to be because I put all of my animated information in red text, I now have an itemized list of things that I need to make. Now, this video may not be covering anything on animation, but it does cover work that needs to be done in any sort of production. This is just a smaller scale. The next step, I save the document in a location that I know I'll be able to find again. Then I open up a program called Audacity. Audacity is a really useful free open source audio recording and audio editing software. It's not some sort of power horse, but there are plenty of professionals out there that use it. Not just on YouTube, but I swear that I've heard instances of professional radio broadcasts where they're using this software. 
Although this isn't the most powerful audio editing software out there in the world, don't let that statement undersail it. You can't beat the free price tag, and as far as free goes, you can't get better quality than Audacity, to my knowledge, at least. If anyone knows of any better software out there that's free, I'm all ears, but until a new free piece of software comes along to claim King of the Hill over Audacity when it comes to audio recording and audio editing, this is the only software you should be using. I also copied the script that I wrote, and I pasted it into a narrow vertical window in Notepad. If you go to Format, Word Wrap, it'll make it so that all of the text reads really well. And keeping the window fairly vertical makes it so that the eye doesn't need to track the text too much. Having this configuration reduces the frustration of losing your place while reading. I then hit record. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today is a presentation on a requested feature for Open Tunes. This video is requesting funds in a crowdsourcing campaign in order to see if we can improve the graphic user interface in Open Tunes. For those of you that are unfamiliar with what a graphic user interface is, it's basically all the icons on the screen that you click on with your mouse. For those of you that haven't heard of Open Tunes, it's a 100%. <clears throat> For those of you that haven't heard of Open Tunes, it's a 100% free and open source piece of animation software. It's full featured as well. As you just heard, for some reason I tend to struggle with my performances, so being able to edit the audio is really handy. When you record your audio, record everything on one recording, one take. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake, just keep on going through it, just keep pushing through. Try not to exceed 30 minutes worth of content though, otherwise your file size gets to be pretty big. That little snippet of me reading the script is a perfect example of how my performances go when I'm reading off the script. For some reason my tongue gets tied and I just start freezing up, but no worries. Uh, you can edit out all of the stutters, stammers, coughs, and etc. Just make sure that you use a system while speaking that is easy to edit. If you tend to string your words together in quick succession on a regular basis and you make very few pauses when you're speaking and all that stuff, the and then you make a mistake, you'll very well have to reread a large block of text over and over again. Whereas, if you take your time and pause after each sentence, you'll only have to reread one sentence. Sometimes I include improv, and this sometimes brings a human personality to the script, because lines that are delivered on the fly can sometimes help. Other times, you forget that you already wrote the information down, and you forgot all about it, and you just wind up irritating yourself. Personally, I find my writing style of communication far more elegant than my verbal capabilities, but I enjoy improv most of the time, especially when the script is found lacking in a particular area here and there. The script is a guide while you're recording the audio, but sometimes it's nice to go off the beaten path and do your own thing for a moment before going back to the laid out path. As long as the end product is something like 95% of what's in your final draft of your script, I don't really see anything wrong with a little bit of improv. Recording your audio at this stage of the process can really help in setting up your timing for all of your animations that are all going to be involved in the project. Also, being able to hear the audio and being able to see the storyboard that accompanies it later on down the road, being able to see those two things really helps in the process towards making the final product because you have something that's auditory and visual to go off of. You might think that my workflow takes too long, 
that pausing in your speech makes it so that you'll be editing the dialogue for a really long time, which is easier to edit. A bunch of really short stutters, stammers, mispronunciation, pauses, rereading a single sentence here and there, or having to listen to failed take after failed take of the same paragraph over and over and over and over again. Maybe some people out there have a system for working in that way, but I haven't found one that I can go through quickly without deleting an important information. You might also think, oh, I messed up in that recording process, and you f might feel like pressing the stop button on the recording and just edit it there and then just press record again. Yeah, don't do that because it creates a separate track. And also, the reason being is every single time that you press stop on your recording, your microphone captures the background noise differently. And getting rid of background noise can be a real pain in the butt, especially when it's on different tracks. And putting them all onto one track to get rid of all of the background noise doesn't really work very well because your microphone recorded all of the background noise differently each time you press the stop button. So just don't press the stop button, get it all done in one take. Once I'm done recording, there's a background noise. There's always a background noise. It's just this little slight hum. And at the beginning and end of every recording, I make sure that there's a silent portion of audio just for a few seconds here and there. This makes it so that I can select the quietest moments in the recording and use it as a baseline. I then go to Effect Noise Reduction. Notice how I have the noise reduction decibels set to 2 and the sensitivity is also set to 2. I then click on Select Noise Profile. After that, nothing has really been done yet. The noise reduction hasn't been applied. So I then press Ctrl A to select everything and I press Ctrl R in order to apply my last known effect, which is the noise reduction. Now, with the noise reduction, I made sure to apply it nine separate times. Earlier, I said that the noise reduction and sensitivity were both set at two. You could increase those settings to four or five or something like that and only have to apply the noise reduction three times or so. And you can also wind up damaging the quality of sound for your voice through the whole recording if you do it that way. Setting both of those two things at two and applying it nine separate times makes it so that you get rid of the slight hum for the background noise and the quality of your voice recording is preserved. It takes longer to do it this way, however, it sounds better. One thing to note is that the noise reduction effect only gets rid of slight background noises. It won't get rid of barking dogs, the sound of airplanes, or the sound of neighbors who like to play their music really loud in their backyard. I think everyone has a neighbor like that. A neighbor that loves playing music really obnoxiously loud. This can make it difficult to find the right time to record audio, especially when other things need to be done around the house, like the washing machine starts running in the background when the neighbors are finally finished having their little party or something. I'm mentioning this because you're recording sound, and before you start recording, try to find a time when it's quiet, because even if you have some fancy audio editing software, the last thing you want to go and do is extract and delete all of the random random noises of a washing machine, music playing in the background, a helicopter overhead, an airplane, dogs barking, children screaming and playing. Occasionally, sometimes this sort of stuff makes its way into my videos, and there's nothing I can do about that sometimes. But sometimes I just have to cut my losses and meet the weekly deadline. Sometimes background music in a video can help mask the fact that these noises sometimes still make it into your video, and sometimes you just need to re-record all of your audio all over again. Try to make the audio as professional as possible. After that, I listen to the whole recording bit by bit. I delete little mistakes and try to manage pauses in my speech to make it sound better. A lot of times, for some reason, 
I don't really like the sound of me breathing in my recordings, while other times I feel like it sounds more dramatic. Ultimately, you're the director of your audio. You decide how it sounds, what gets edited and what doesn't. Sometimes I splice together different takes of me reading and rereading the same sentence over and over again, and that just somehow makes the best performance. But you'll get the hang of it. Just make sure that after you delete something, you wind it back a little bit and you play the audio before the deleted information and listen to it after the deleted information. This makes it so that you make sure that you didn't accidentally cut out the last pronunciation of a word or something. Nothing's more frustrating than realizing that you accidentally deleted the tail end of what you were saying and a word is just kind of haphazardly stated and there's no way to restore it. Now throughout the week I had to work some long long hours after work and this week my car decided to mark its own territory in its own grave so I haven't had much time to make it to other portions of this project. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get into more exciting portions of the project. However, although screenwriting and audio may not be the most exciting stage, they are extremely important and leaving the video off right there is actually a good thing because it stresses the importance of these two things. If you need more help with how to work Audacity or LibreOffice, there are tons of tutorials that often cover the same material over and over and over and over again. So learning everything you need to know about these two pieces of software that I use inside of this video shouldn't be very difficult and it really shouldn't take very long either. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you didn't like it, please like, share, and subscribe anyways. A lot of hard work and effort goes into making these videos. I, I really do work hard on these videos. And if you guys would like to check out any of my other videos, feel free to click on any of them that are appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much.